Welcome back to our channel. I'm Dan. And I'm Joanne. What are we making today? We're making bruschetta today using some of our garden produce. Yeah, and the garden has slowed down quite a bit over yeah. the last, uh, especially two weeks or so. Yeah. It's the heat. Uh, our tomatoes are much like the population. They've slowed down quite a bit <laughs> That's uh, true. because of these That's temperatures true. that we've much had. They're smaller, smaller than they were. We have some little sun damage and heat damage on them. So this is a good recipe to use those for. We did keep a running total of the larger tomatoes, not the cherry tomatoes. And I think we're at like 160 mm -hmm. or something like that, which is probably down from last year. Way down. But yeah. uh, it's it's been pretty good. Yeah, but that's not bad because we had around 10 producing. We had three vines that never produced. Never produced. We, we tried a lot of different varieties this year. So that gives us an idea of what does well here and what doesn't. So that's really from about 10 plants. Yeah, so we're going to log our um, what did well and what didn't, and that will yeah. help us choose the seeds that we're yes. going to use for next year. Yes. i got a joke for you. Ready? Oh, great. What's the opposite of artificial intelligence? I don't know. Natural stupidity. <laughs> So. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true. Too. That's true. <laughs> bruschetta, I kind of looked up uh, bruschetta for you. It mm -hmm. is, uh, it originated in ancient Rome. It was a way mm -hmm. for the people to use and supplement their meals with mm -hmm. the stale bread that they yes. had. So it's basically, I know you're going to spike it up. It's going to be great, but it's basically oil on bread. Yeah. And some vegetables. Um, and in Italian, they actually pronounce it bruschetta. Bruschetta, did not. Know. But he, here in Oklahoma, people would probably say what? <laughs> and we know bruschetta, and it actually means toasted bread. Uh, it doesn't really mean any of the stuff where put the you know the toppings, but yeah. And different places have different uh, specialties or how they prepare it. Uh, some okay. would put uh, capers and other things mm -hmm. on it. Others not so much. But anyway, it's. Probably much the same as like barbecue in the United mm -hmm. States as far as where you go depends right. on what it's going to taste like. That makes yeah. sense. It does indeed. Yes. Uh, speaking of the garden, the um, Kajari melons are doing incredible. Going nuts. <laughs> They're going nuts. It's something easy and kind of fun to grow because it's really, I don't want to say bulletproof, but uh, we haven't yeah. had the... Uh, potato bugs, nothing's attacked it so far. I've heard that squash bugs can mm. and squash bugs did kill our well no we had the 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 no we had the kind of insect that goes in it i forget what that's called yeah but we could get but we haven't so haven't far yet. and we didn't the one year we grew them this was kind of a follow-up late crop for right. us we had finished the green beans and stuff so we had an empty bed there and we had uh -huh. a trellis so she planted, I don't know, seven or eight of them along that trellis, and they've taken up that. You can see in this picture how high it is, and also it's gone over the bed, and now when I weed eat, I'll probably take give it a little haircut because yeah. a lot of yeah. it has kind of overflowed into that. So we found one that was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, golf ball size, so mm -hmm. we'll be watching those as well. All right, you ready to yeah. get started? Yeah, I am. I'm going to ask you to, to slice, well, more than slice, this is Kalamati olives. You wouldn't want to use the canned black olives. These have a lot of flavor, and that's what we want. I would slice it in half and then do it. We kind of want, I guess you'd call it chopped. Got it. And I will start with the tomatoes. The tomatoes are kind of, can be a little bit, I'm going to have to do some creative cutting because like one of them has some sun and, sun and heat damage. So I'm going to work around all that. But like we said, this is a good thing to to use your rough tomatoes with. We had beautiful tomatoes earlier in the year, but and hopefully this fall we'll have some more. So it's our tomatoes, our red tomatoes, and then we're also, it's always nice if you can to mix different colors. So I'm gonna add some yellow pear cherry tomatoes to it. And I, so all those are ours and our basil. Everything else. Is it, are you going to use bread that you did with your sourdough and we're mix? We're going to do some sourdough bread from the freezer where I've made sourdough bread. We're really getting into the sourdough bread. We uh, well, it. I'm getting into eating it. You're getting into making <laughs> it. We're learning more and more. We've not yeah. done a video on that because we feel like we're still learning. Yes. Uh, and some people ask about uh, creating a starter from scratch. Mm -hmm. You've not done that I yet. Not. 
but we'll probably do doing that maybe in Whoops. the future. Whoops, that was a good that, tomato that one down jumped. there. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll do that in the future. We um, also have the weather episode that we promised. Probably be shooting that in the next few days. People submitted weather questions in. It's turnips and tornadoes, and we do mostly the turnips part, which is the plants and the eating and whatnot, but not as much weather. So we'll try to do that. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, we had some interesting questions submitted, and uh, so we'll try to do that. But feel free to post your questions. We have a Gmail address, to turnipsandtornadoes at gmail.com. You can post them at the end of this video. Uh, we've got a Turnips and Tornado Facebook page as well. Now, what about winter sowing? When does that, we're getting, mm -hmm. uh, now that we're in August, uh, when does that take place? December, maybe? Mid January? December to mid-January, yeah. pretty much, for our region. All right, for our region, which is 7A, and <laughs> some people... Uh, I don't know, in March or so, they're saying, well, you're way, be you're way ahead of us on that. Well, it's because we started in December by winter sowing. There are two episodes uh, that we did this year's and also the previous year's on winter sowing. We'll probably hit that again because people um, are still interested in that because it's a way to save money. It's a way to get a start on everything, and it's also a way for you to not have to hope that your favorite nursery has the variety you want. You can order your seeds months ahead of time, get exactly the cucumber or green beans or whatever uh, that you want. Tomatoes. Yes. Uh, a lot of different places you can order seeds. You tend to use that I Am Gardener. Yes. And that. also mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, what's the other one called? Rare Seeds. Rare, it's called, it kind of has two names. I'm not sure what's up with that. Rare Seeds. Dot com and also Baker Seeds. Baker yeah. Seeds. Yeah. They have a lot of unusual seeds. That's where we got our Kajari seeds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, our, this year we, we bought very, very few plants. We, other than the plant, the ones we seeded in the ground, uh, the rest of them pretty much we um, grew winter ourselves. Sowed. We winter sowed them. Uh, and, and this was the first year we winter sowed tomatoes, and they they were so healthy. Yeah, so healthy. As opposed to buying them, and then yes. you don't know how long they've been sitting out in the sun or yeah. how dry they are. So winter sowing, and it doesn't take a lot of room, which we don't mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. It certainly doesn't take much money, which mm -hmm. we don't have. <laughs> so it's a, a nice little fun thing to do, and also yes. in you know in January when. People are wishing they were out in the garden. We still can go out and yes. see our little containers check and on them. check on our babies. And yeah. I don't know. It just makes you more prepared, I think, for yeah. uh, for whatever. If I you... totally enjoyed it. Yeah. More than I ever thought. And flowers as well. And you flowers. Did your we pollinators. Did, we did tons of flowers this what year. What is that plant that you keep? Uh, not propagating, but keeps coming up as volunteers, <laughs> and you now have that in about six or seven different pots. What yes. Is, what uh, is that? Celosia. Celosia. If you ever grow celosia in a flower bed, you will never have to buy it again. And it's really easy to um, get it out of the bed if you don't want it. It, it, it has a very, um, the root system's very shallow, so it's really, I don't mind pulling out the ones we don't want. But it's done well in the heat. You wouldn't yes. think a shallow root plant would do well in the yeah, heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. I will, I will, I was gonna say I'll always grow it. I will always make sure there's a couple of them in our flower bed so that we, some of our plants, I know one of them when I bought it said it was a short-lived annual. That was Snapdragon, and, and, and it did really well and stuck in for a long time, and it finally gave up. So I've been replacing some of my spring plants with, um, with that celosia, and, and it's like we've been 100, close to 100 and over 100, mm -hmm. and I have not babied them very much at all, if at all. So I don't call it bulletproof, but for us, it's withstood mm -hmm. uh, the temperatures that our other plants have kind of died yeah. uh, on because of the heat. So it makes it nice you can put up, you know, the other one dies, you pull it out, yeah. then you replant yeah. uh, it with some of those in the 
we had some hot days in the upper 90s and as you put them on the back porch to cut down on the wind that hits them and beats up yeah they're not hardened off so you put a laundry mm -hmm. basket on top of yeah. those and it's worked out really well very well laundry baskets in the garden <laughs> now if we had a you know a two acre garden or something right. like that it wouldn't be practical but for our little raised bed garden and things like that we've used the heck out of laundry baskets we put sure a basket have. on top of it that gets some air circulation you can still kind of water through it it also cuts down on the heat and then on windy days which we have a lot of around here throw a brick on top of the laundry basket yeah. and now we've kind of worn our laundry baskets out. Well, we bought cheap ones because yeah. they were out in the garden. Yeah. Um, but even after they're kind of worn out, they still work. Still fine. work. They don't have to um, be perfect. And the wind, it's nice because it still gets some wind. Because with plants, you need some wind because that helps them to be strong. Mm -hmm. It just kind of what would you say disperses the wind? And yeah, I think so. Out. Yeah, it definitely cuts down on it. Mm -hmm. That's why some people don't like to stake new trees. They'll say, well, mm -hmm. it needs some growth mm -hmm. to stimulate the root system. But uh, obviously, if you get uh, too much, you're going to wind yeah. up with a dead tree. But you want to kind of guide it uh, where it's not going to be going up at a 15, 20 degree angle. So that's kind of used mine. But I've kind of loosened up over the last uh, month or so on our relatively new trees. Mm -hmm. Where they can flop around a little bit, but you know, if we get an 80 mile an hour wind, which we do, which we do, we even had 100 mile an hour, 100 mile winds. winds of, let's see, when, I don't remember when that was, did a lot of destruction, yeah. a lot of destruction. And our little trees survived through that. Okay. Okay, let's throw those in. And I always like to use, for things like this, I like to use a real shallow dish because I want the, it's going to have balsamic vinegar. And, and olive oil in it. That way, the, what's at the top, it, it gets, it stays on it better rather gotcha. than the top of it, top parts kind of not getting the, the, the good stuff. Okay, if you want to cut these up, just slice them. Just some green onions. They're from the store. They do not look very good. <laughs> well, we used I'm up all of our green onions, onions, but you still have some of our, the big ones. Yes. Yeah. Those are still in the closet and pantyhose? They are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're doing really well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and do some. I'm just going to crush and then do gar make garlic very, very finely chopped. And I do have a garlic press, but it's kind of hard to clean. So some, most of the time I just, unless I'm doing a ton of it. I'd rather just kind of do it so myself. So, bruschetta, could you make this uh, a day ahead, or would the tomatoes get too mushy? You could, but, you know, when you put tomatoes into a refrigerator, it does change the texture and the taste of them. Okay. So I would use it a second day, but I would want to make, if I had leftovers, mm -hmm. but I would want to make it day up. But it is nice to have it uh, an hour or several hours ahead. That always helps things. So if you had someone coming over, nail. you could make it in the afternoon yeah. before. For sure. For sure that would work. And I'm putting two garlics in there. And all these things, I, I will, we'll post the recipe like we always do. It's a recipe I did a long time ago. Um, but you can put, if it's something you love, you can put more of that. If it's something you don't love, you can use less of it or leave it out entirely. My hands are dirty. Are yours can, no. or, or wet? Would you get, go ahead and, you can use this to put in about, I'd say about a tablespoon. These what, are capers. What is it, capers? Capers. Capers are a bud from a shrub or tree, hmm. and then they pickle them. They have lots of flavor, lots of flavor. Enough, or you want more? I'd do one more times that. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut up some basil from our garden. We've been making, we've been We've been preserving quite a fair amount of stuff. Uh, we've made quite a bit of pesto, and I'm getting ready to dry some basil and some thyme and some chives. Let's see what. You just lay them out and just let them dry. Yeah, and I just lay them on a table chop them up here and in the house. Chop them up, put them in a jar. Yep, yep. You got to let them totally, totally dry. Um, but I, I like. I've really used the heck out of those in the winter. And we even made oak, uh, pickled okra. Pickled okra. 
uh, bought the okra. No, that was our okra. I don't know why I'm saying that. We have tons of okra. Um, but we did go buy some cucumbers because right. we did not we did not bought the cucumbers, cucumbers. Yeah. and uh, pickled those. Yeah. And, and I rolled this basil up to help it to. Very good. Um, and the bad news about the okra is we don't know yet how it tastes. Do and we? the cucumbers. And the cucumbers because it says uh, give them a month, at yeah. least a month before you sample them. So, you know, we'd love to tell you that it came out all wonderful and good. We assume it did, but we really won't the know. The brine tasted good. The brine, yeah. But we got to, we don't know if we're, what we're hoping for is to be somewhat crispy. Yeah. And not be. So that's new to us. We had never canned those. And, and in about a month, if we, we have a little farm store we bought the cucumbers from. Uh, if they did come out good when we taste them in a month, maybe they'll still have some and we'll do yeah. another. Yeah, do another batch. Another batch. Okay. The, uh, let me see. Let me go wash my hands. The uh, electric pressurized canner does both water bath and their traditional type of pressure canning. And uh, that's worked out pretty well. Oh. At first we were pretty, you know, like we were de you know, <coughs> defusing a bomb. We were like, okay, now what do we do? Okay, now be careful. Do but it kind of walks you through the instructions mm -hmm. and the manual has quite a few pages, but then we found afterwards a quick guide, yes. a laminated little one sheet thing for water bath or pressurized. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of follow the direction, let it have 10 minutes, put the water into this line, let it do that. Are you doing that? Preparing the jars and get them clean. Anyway, I feel more confident about mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, I see those people and hats off to you. If you watch this and you, can yeah we can you know 45 yeah. quarts of I that or something i'm like you're amazing because that's 12 hours in the kitchen um yes so. especially if you're doing the regular pressure canner because you have to stay with it you can't walk off this one you can walk, walk off, off even yeah uh, one reason we chose that electronic one is we did want to water bath things and we wanted to do the traditional pressure canning and since this does both we're limited on storage space yeah. so it is huge yeah but we only have to have one huge thing instead yeah. of two huge things so that yeah. was kind of a so i threw point. away some of the clothes in your closet <laughs> just to have room no, <laughs> you're funny okay let's see what else we need okay now we're going to go ahead um i didn't i did not get a some spoons, but okay. about two tablespoons, because also put this to how much you want. This balsamic vinegar has been very good. It's Napa Valley Grand Reserve balsamic vinegar. It is really very good. And the olive oil, our neighbor's mother, I, I believe they said she brought it back from Italy. It's called Calabrian olive oil. What Did you look it up to see if anything about that? No, it's uh, it's known to be a very good one. Nice. I couldn't read really the, what good. was over there. Yeah, yeah. The lights off. So which one do you want? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, for the balsamic vinegar, let's start with two tablespoons. Okay. And just kind of put it. We're gonna. And my recipe says do this separately. Put it on it. I don't know why I said that. You can just put it on there. You don't have to do that. And then we are going. It's thick. Yeah, it's very thick. That's what I like about that. Generally, thick all thick balsamic vinegar means a nicely aged balsamic okay. vinegar. So two tablespoons of that. Then it says three to four tablespoons of olive oil. I think I'm going to start with two tablespoons because all of this is to taste. Okay. For sure. Let's see if I can get this open. Can you open that? Of course. It's it's got olive oil on it, so it's kind of. Okay, so go ahead and put, start with two tablespoons, and then we'll, we can certainly add more. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt, but I'm not going to put much because both the capers mm -hmm. and the calamati olives have a lot of sodium in them. And I'm going to add some fresh cracked pepper. Would you say this is healthy or not? I would. With I all would. the olive oil, it, it kind of, I thought it was up until the time we started. Well, you know, some people drink all, just drink olive oil practically for uh, health, so it just depends on what your health needs are and all that. Would you get a big spoon over there sure. and, and go ahead and toss that? Absolutely. And then I've already, I've got some sliced um, sourdough bread from the freezer. I wish it was sliced a little thinner, but it's what we, what we have. Um, 
And I'm going to go ahead and kind of paint it a little bit with some olive oil. And we are going to put this in the oven and toast it up. You could also put it in a skillet with some olive oil in it. That would be good also. So you are, you've been preheating your oven? I have, yeah, and it is preheated Why don't you now. preheat that on? 375, the recipe says 350, but I, I would say 375 would be better. Let's see, where's the olive oil? You know, you can change the recipe. It's your recipe, true, so. True, 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 true. So, I, and some people put a lot of olive oil. It is tasty. I don't like too much on the toast. I like it to kind of taste more like the toast. So I'm going to just use this little brush. It's colorful. It's very colorful. And this would definitely be good to sit for a couple of hours, but that's all right. We'll taste it and then we'll probably eat it later. Excellent. Yeah. Today we're having this with a side, aren't we? Yeah. It's going to be a side. I think you yeah. have some pizza. We have some leftover pizza from a nice pizza place. So I wouldn't normally probably serve this with pizza because the pizza has is bread, bread and this is bread. It's true. But that's okay. But it was a really was, good leftover pizza. It really is. It really <laughs> is. Okay. And then I'm going to, you don't have to do this. If you're watching your sodium, you certainly don't need to do this. But it is really good on toast to put a very tiny amount of salt. So going in the oven for what? Probably. Ten, ten minutes maybe? Let's see what my recipe says because I haven't made this in a while. Probably about seven to ten minutes. Okay. And you could certainly broil it. You just mm -hmm. have to. Would you do this? Because my I've got olive on me. Absolutely. Do it one side and then do the other side. I'm going to get some of this off of me. Yeah, it has been a while since we've had this. Yeah. Um, but now that you're making bread and now that we still have tomatoes. Yeah. We've uh, we've had caprese salad with mm -hmm. our fresh tomatoes. We might do a video on that this week too. This is kind of easy, easy stuff. Plus, we got behind on our video, so now we're trying yes, to catch up just a little bit on that. So that's yes, why we're. Yes, we did. We had a house full of company, off and on. Several waves. For about two and a half weeks. Yeah. Um. So. So we got behind. So, we got so behind. that's going to go in the oven. When it comes yeah. back, we will prepare we'll the bruschetta. So we'll see you yeah. then. Mm -hmm. All right, bread is looking good. Is the pan hot? It's very, do not touch that. <laughs> okay. I did want to say that if you don't grow tomatoes, if you can buy some homegrown tomatoes, if that's not possible, I, you could still make it with store-bought tomatoes. I would do either, tell me that again. Heirloom. Thank you. I don't know why, but I have a little, either heirloom or Roma tomatoes, and it would be it would still be very good. Better chance of doing that at a farmer's market as opposed to going to your big grocery store because they may not label yeah. uh, as heirloom tomatoes. And yeah, be a little I, harder I've been to find seeing those. it in the grocery Have stores, I, I don't, and I don't know how good they are, but I've heard people say that that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. There you go. Okay, so what? hold on a minute, just a minute. We're gonna do one thing to the toast. I'm gonna to make a little sliver. Let me turn off my oven. A little sliver of garlic. A little sliver of garlic. And this is what makes garlic toast. You can do this anytime you're having garlic toast and just rub that fresh garlic on it. It's very good. Good. Very good. Now you can put some on. And a while ago, I added another tablespoon or so of the balsamic vinegar after I tasted of it and added a tiny bit of salt. So just do it to taste. Do it for sure. And reach down there and get some of that juice too. That's kind of part of it. Kind of okay. softens the bread up. Let me see if I can get it to. There you go. And as this sits, it's going to ooze more juices too. Okay. Nice. This is nice and messy. There we go. Too. Bruschetta, something you can make as an appetizer, maybe mm -hmm. uh, as a side, but something that you can make uh, for your guests. And again, you can yes. put as much or little as you want to of this. Yes. Uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, hitting the post notification bells helps our little channel grow. We got behind a little bit on shooting our videos, so we're going to try to catch up. In fact, we may shoot a, even a second episode today. So. Let's give this ready? a shot. Yeah. Messy, messy. Messy's always good. Oh, wow. That balsamic vinegar really mm. kicks into high gear. So good. Easy to make, mm. fast, and delicious. Mm -hmm. Healthy, and eh, depends. Oh, yeah, I think so. Think it is? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. If you're trying to do a no fat diet, 
make it a little bit harder, but you can leave a lot of that out too. Absolutely. I, I, I bet it would be good if you left all of it out, but it definitely makes it better. All right, thank you so much. Let's see if Sophie wants to say hi before we <laughs> wrap this up. She is not far away. Ne never far away hey, and girl. going to the groomers next week. But uh, no, you can't have any of that. There's garlic on that toast. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Do you smell the garlic on us? Uh, yeah. <laughs>